Hello everyone, this is the Mining Geologist and I'm back again with another very exciting and very informative tutorial. We're back to Python. The past two tutorials, they were pure Python also, and you guys are enjoying this. You want to see more about Python. You want to see how you can use this amazing programming language to solve your geoscience problems. Whether you want to automate things or create uh, user interfaces or create web applications. We've seen in one of the previous tutorials how you can create a web application to download digital elevation models uh, automatically and clipping them on the fly. And I'm sure that uh, was a useful one for a lot of you. And I'm back again to show you how you can create a different web application, but this time to automate EDAs. I know that um, whatever is the process you're dealing with, whatever is your data, the first thing that you want to look at, you want to look at your data, you want to look at some histograms, the min, the maximum, and some things that you're, you are probably doing every time and you don't have to do that like uh, every single time you type in the same lines you import the same uh, data the same way you look at the same things and you analyze the same things if you can automate that if you can do if you can make like a, a web application or like a a small software that does that for every single uh, data that you have, that would be amazing and that's going to save you a lot of time. And this is what we are dealing with today. I'm going to show you how you can create this cool uh, web application that's going to allow you to do um, some of the boring stuff that you don't want to deal with so you can focus on uh, your analysis. So. Here's what this application uh, is doing. So let's go and the first thing that we, that we need to do is we are going to import a CSV file. So in our case, it could be like um, uh, an essay table. It could be anything that you want. So in, uh, in my case, I'm going to import a simple color file because we are interested in the mining industry. And that's one of the things that we use a lot. It's the uh, drill hole tables. One of them is the color in which we have the different uh, um, drill holes. But this is, uh, you know, this application, it's very useful if used with an assay table. So let's go and look at what kind of report that we can generate in here. So you click on that generate uh, report and you can see this is color report. Basically, we have the first uh, tab in here in which we have overview and you can see that we have drop down menu, you have overview, variables, interactions, correlation, missing, uh, missing values and so on. We're going to look at these. So basically you have in the overview, you can see you look at some uh, statistics about the data set that you have, the number of variables, it's five. Basically this is the number of attributes that we have. So we have, for example, the uh, drill hole ID, X, Y, and Z, and probably the depth. And you can see this is the number of observation in our uh, observations. In our case, it's gonna be the number of drill holes. We have 40, the missing cells, we don't have any missing cells. The percentage of the missing cells compared to the whole data set, it's 0%, and some really useful informations in here. We have the alerts also, we have 11, and you can see that it says, for example, X is highly overall correlated with ID. So um, this might be something you know confusing in here, but imagine using this with an essay table. It's gonna show you like, highly correlated elements, for example, and in resource estimation, this is going to be very helpful. And you can see, for example, reproduction, this is where, you know, when and how much it took to compile this report and so on. The variables, you can have like a drop down menu with all the different attributes and the variables in your case. So. Uh, that you have in your data set. We look at the depth, you can see that uh, the numbers are real numbers, or maybe the ID, you can see that we have categorical in here. So you know that that, that attribute contains uh, some, you know, uh, text values, not real numbers. And the, the statistics are going to change based on the type of the data. So let's look at the depth, for example. And you can see that we have uh, 40 again. The missing, we don't have any missing. The percentage of the missing. And you can see that we have the maximum, the minimum. 
I mean like the minimum, the maximum, the number of zeros, we have zero zeros, and we have like a histogram in here, we can look at some more data. This is the statistics, like the fifth percentile, we have like a standard deviation, the coefficient of variation, and a lot of other things that are, I'm sure that they are useful. We have a histogram, these are the common values, and they count the frequency of these common values. And um, since they are unique values, you can see that we have like probably, I don't know, like 10 in here, another 30, and the frequency is divided between them 2.5, and uh, the count is always one, but you know, think of this, think of your own data set and think how you can use this one and how useful it is, uh, because I'm sure it is. And you have like the minimum 10 values, the maximum 10 values. Uh, the interaction is also a cool thing. So you choose the uh, Y axis, I mean the X axis from here, the Y axis from here, and you see the correlation in here. Uh, or the interaction between these two variables. So if we pick, for example, X and Y, this is, I mean, the X and Y, this is basically how a plan view looks like. And maybe if we pick X and uh, uh, depth, for example, you can see that this one, the correlation or the interaction between them, X and Z, or maybe you can change and flip this one with depth and X from here. And you can play around this one and it's gonna give you a lot of information that are, I'm sure that they are useful for you. And now I like this one, it's the correlation. So uh, we have different kinds of them. So if we look at the auto one, so basically X and X, which is the correlation between X and X, it's one. So basically we have like uh, a coefficient of variation of uh, uh, I mean, like correlation uh, equal to one. So you can see that we it's uh, blue in here, but then depending on the correlation between the two variable, you're gonna have like a color. So if you have like different, um, like different elements and you wanna see the correlation between these uh, or the correlation between the different elements, you don't have to do them uh, one by one. You can look at this correlation map in here and it's gonna give you a good idea about the correlation. And this is really, really useful. So maybe you wanna see what is this one? Well, I, I don't know this one. So you can go and click on show correlation description and it's gonna give you a description of that, um, that method there. So the missing values, if you have some missing values, you're gonna have like a, some sort of a histogram in here that shows you the missing values. And you have like the first 10 rows, the last 10 rows. So you can have an idea about the data. Maybe you wanna check how they look. And um, this is really, really useful. And I'm sure it's gonna be useful for a lot of you guys. So if you wanna know how to create this one, don't worry, we're not gonna have like a hundred line of codes. It's just a couple line of codes and it's really, really, really simple. So stick around to learn how you can do this one. Okay, guys, so let's start with some basic stuff. So I'm going to show you how things uh, work, and then we can jump into how you can create that one. So the first thing that we are going to import in here, so I don't want to type and uh, waste your time, so I'm going to just uh, show you how I did this line by line, and you can go and replicate this one or try it by yourself. So the first thing is I'm going to import some libraries that we'll need. So uh, pandas is basically pandas. Uh, I'm sure that you guys know what is pandas. I've used that in a lot of the tutorials that I've covered so far. So you can think of this one as if you can manipulate tables in Python. Think of this as if you have like uh, an Excel sheet inside Python. So you can look at columns, you can look at the different rows, you can uh, manipulate the columns. You can say, for example, the first column plus the second column and create a resulting uh, column. So you can do that with pandas. Now the new library that we have in here that uh, maybe not all of you know it, or maybe none of you know about this one, it's called pandas profiling. So you can just go and install this one by doing pip install uh, pandas profiling, and you can go and import profile report. So we'll see in a moment what this one does. 
So basically, this is the data set that we have. It's uh, we've imported this uh, color one, and we can go and look at this um, table. It's the same uh, color file that I've showed you, and this is how it looks. This is the the table that we're going to deal with. Okay, so let's go and get rid of this one. Okay, so then what we want to do is we are going to use that uh, profile report from Pandas Profiling to create that report that we've seen. So basically, if I go to um, Profile, and if I create a variable called profile and do profile report, I can load this data frame that I've just created, which is this one. And I call the report, for example, color report, or I can make this like a variable so I can change the name of the report if I want to. So this one is going to create, uh, it's going to compile all of the, uh, it's going to look at the data frame and compile all the, the, um, the things that we've seen. And if I go and run this, you can see what's happening in here. So, um, okay, it's, uh, yeah, it's not showing that. So I need to, yeah, and this line, I'm going to export that to uh, an HTML file. So you can, if you're running this in a Jupyter notebook, you can uh, use um, a widget that's going to show that automatically in your Jupyter notebook. But since I'm not doing that, I want to export that report to an HTML file that I can load into a Streamlit application. We'll see how to do that in a moment. So if I run this one, it is going to compile all the data. You can see it's doing the, the it's thinking there uh, automatically and exporting that to an HTML file. So basically, if I navigate to the C and HTML here, myreport.html, I'm going to find that HTML file. I can just double click on that one. It's going to open in uh, Chrome or whatever. Uh, browser that you're using and you can use that one if you want to do it this way you can still do it this way but I want to make this as an application that I can use so I don't have to like copy and paste the path to my uh, file in here and do this uh, manual thing so I want to make an application that I can probably deploy online which means I can host that online or on a local server and I can just launch that application and uh, import my data set and it's going to generate that report automatically. So I want to make things uh, more um, you know, uh, user friendly. So let me go and command this one. Uh, so they're not, so I'm not using that. I'm going to show you now how you can create that app. Okay, so let me just remove these. And you'll see that um, how Streamlit can make things really easy. So basically, the first line here, it's called CSV uh, file. This is the first variable. And I do SD file uploader. That's how easy it is to create a file upload to, uh, uh, you know, uh, in your Streamlit app. So let me go and command this, all of this, so you guys can see what this one exactly is doing. So let me go and run this. Okay, if I go back here now and rerun this, and you can see what this one is doing. It's basically creating that widget that will allow us to import files. That's how easy it is to do it in Streamlit. So that text that we've, uh, it was in here, this text, upload a CSV file, it's showing in here, upload a CSV file, okay? And it's that, that's it. That's how you can create that widget. It's really simple, okay? So then what are we doing in here? It's basically we are saying, if there is a file, if we clicked on that button, upload a CSV file, and we've uploaded a file, if, there's a, if that's equal to true, then I want that file inside this uh, variable. So I'm going to read that file as a data frame. I'm going to convert that to a data frame, okay? I can display this data frame if I want to by doing sd.dataframe and I pass in that data frame that I've just created, but we're not interested in that one, but you can add it if you want so, okay? Then what I'm doing is I'm just using these two same lines to turn that data frame that I've just imported 
to that report and create that report and save it to my local C drive to my uh, it's called myreport.html. The same thing that I've done here. We've, we didn't do anything different. Okay, then uh, all I have to do is to like do this one. If that generate button uh, is clicked, we've seen how to create a button in Streamlit in the previous uh, tutorial. If I click on that generate button, this is how you create a button, by the way, in Streamlit. If I click on that button, I want you to open that HTML file, which is this one. I called it my report. Look at that one and import it with an UDF uh, 8 encoding. Store that to an HTML file and then the source code, I'm going to read that HTML file. So I will be able to load that as a component in Streamlit. So component, by the way, if uh, we've imported uh, Streamlit as ST and from Streamlit components V1, we've imported components and we're going to use this one to render that HTML file. So if you have an HTML file or a page that you want to render inside uh, a Streamlit web application, that's how you do it. The first thing, you import that HTML file by doing open um, that HTML file. Then you read the content of that HTML file by doing HTML file dot read. You store that in a different variable. And then all you have to do is to do component dot HTML. So you're telling the Streamlit components that I have an HTML file. It's not like, I don't know, like it's not a CSV file, it's not an MP3 file, it's an HTML file, and you pass in the source code of that one. So, you know, Streamlit is going to be able to render that out. Now, if you don't use this one, basically it's going to be 150 pixels. So, one way around that, you want to make this uh, maybe a large number. You can see that I've set it to 10,000 pixels and you'll see that I have a lot of white space in the bottom but you can change this to whatever you want based on uh, how you want to render that HTML file and else which means that if that button is not clicked I want you to write please import a CSV file that's it that's the full web application that you've seen that cool application it's just a couple of lines of code and you know it's it's really that simple. Let me go and run this. And basically, if you run this, this is how to run a Streamlit app. You're going to co copy this one and run CMD, copy and paste, and click on enter. And it's going to load in your uh, browser in here. So you can see that I can go and browse. I'm going to the um, CSV file. And now it is imported. You can see it is running in here. And then I click on generate report and it's going to take some time to create that report and save it to my local drive and then import the HTML file that was uh, rendered. Uh, I mean, that was exported and render that in my Streamlit app. And I'm going to have this one. Now, what's cool about this is that I don't have to type anything. Now I have this app. All I have to do is to import my file and then click on generate report and it's going to generate a different report for me based on my data set. That's it guys. If you think that this was useful, if you want to see more like this, or if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you're not subscribed and this is the first time that you see my channel, make sure to subscribe. I share cool things that you can do uh, as a geoscientist. Uh, as a geoscientist and if you're a mining engineer or a geologist or uh, a geoscientist in general this is the channel that you've been looking for make sure to subscribe and hit that like button and with that being said see you guys in the next one